Do you know what the checkered love? I heard it in this film and then put it on a playlist again because I was like, it's so good. Why have I forgotten about Checkered Love by Kim Wilde? Because it's set in the 80s, a lot of 80s films and TV shows don't get that vibe. They, they don't feel authentic, but I think this really does. I think the set design and the costume and the makeup, I think they've nailed it. I think it's on the money. <laughs> Hello, hello, welcome back. Today we're talking about The Fence, which is a film that came out, I think, a couple of years ago. I think it got a cinema release last year, but maybe people don't know about it. So it's quite nice that we've been approached to actually chat about this. We were contacted by the director, the writer and director, who's Will Stone. Hello, William Stone. Hi. <laughs> I say Will Stone. I know he calls himself Will, but obviously the professional term is William. We're professional here. We're professional here, Will William. We are Boys on Phil. My name is Phil and that is Sean. And we are kind of struggling with filter colours keep changing. It's almost like a Wizard of Oz. I think you're in the club still. You're <laughs> in, the, in club. the club and that backdrop is like some kind of like one of those like zoom artificial backdrops. And you're still in the club DJing. And you're like, oh, I'll just do a quick review. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't stopped. Never stopped partying. Anyway, how are you? How was your birthday? You went to My Athens. birthday was great. Um, the years just fly by. I, we, I was joking about the 40s just being this decade where you blink and you're like, oh, the 40s are really odd. Like, <laughs> it was great. And I was in Athens and I was, uh, Phil and I were talking before we came on. It seemed like everybody and their uncle were in Athens at the same time. So I think it's really popping at the moment and it's great. And peace out to the Athens children because it's a real party scene. I loved it. I feel like I've missed out. I think I'm the only person that wasn't there. You were the only person not in Athens because you were in the club. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we are talking about The Fence, which is written and directed by Will Stone and based on an award-winning short, which did really well. I think it got over four and a half million views online. Um, I'm so sure. curious to see it. I'm really curious. Now that I've seen this film, obviously, um, it'd be nice to go back and see where where it originated but it's a british comedy drama set on a council estate in bristol in the 80s and we love an 80s movie i mean love. it's peppered with some really brilliant 80s tunes i don't know if you've been watching it but i've been watching this tv series on sky a town called malice obviously based on the jam track mm. and it's really i mean it's not amazing but i love it because it's got um somebody from the goonies in who is martha plimpton she stars oh, yeah as the mother and it's a crime thriller which is um, basically about a family of petty thieves from Bermondsey and obviously I live in Bermondsey so it 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 was quite interesting for for a lot of reasons but they have these tracks from the 80s in there and they're almost kind of strategically placed I don't know have you been watching any of it I haven't but I think I know where you're going to go with this because um that was one of the highlights well the fence actually I thought was great to come out and say it. I think it's great yeah yeah um and um, it was, yeah, there's this really well-placed 80s tunes in there. You love a bit of Kaj Goo Goo, love a bit of whatever. It was just really lovely placed. And, you know, my husband always like, he's always saying to me, God, you're a bit like Shazam. Because I'm like, oh, this is this. Um, and it was, it was great. So I thought the soundtrack absolutely beautifully anchored it in, um, in the 80s without feeling like a pastiche. Absolutely. 80s films can feel a bit kind of a bit saccharine. Yeah, I was just going to say that. And that's why I, I, I made that reference to A Town Called Malice, because A Town Called Malice, it's all the tracks that you're familiar with. It's all the big hits. Whereas with this film, with The Fence, there are other hits. Obviously, there's Checkered Love, Kim Wilde. Oh, there's love. Love. A motorhead in there as well. But there's also Madness, which is the Bed and Breakfast Man, which which is a song that I wasn't that familiar with. I mean, it was on the album from 1979, I think, um, before the 80s. But but there's some some tracks that are really unfamiliar. And, and I like that because it's tracks that aren't cliche 80s songs. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what, the Checkered Love, I heard it in this film and then put it on a playlist again because I was like, it's so good. Why have I forgotten about Checkered Love by Kim Amazing. Wilde? Yeah, so yeah. So good. So, so good. I think they've chosen the songs well. And also because it's set in the 80s, a lot of 80s films and TV shows don't get that vibe. They, they don't feel authentic, but I think this really does. I think the set design and the costume and the makeup, I think they've nailed it. I think it's on the money. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It reminded me of, it's a very loose reference, but it reminded me a little bit of the tone of the Formonti which is obviously from Sheffield, where I'm from, where 
it had some grittiness and it had some realism to it. You know, and I, having grown up in Sheffield, I was like, yeah, I can relate to this. Okay, so it's a blockbuster movie, but I can relate to it. It's not like some over varnished, over polished pastiche of a northern town. It was actually quite honest. And so I got some elements of that as well. And a little bit, again, loose of This Is England. I like, was going to say that too. And a little bit of Shaun of the Dead. Not too little, much. But, but I tell you why I think Shaun of the Dead, and I think it's a good reference, is I think this is one of those films that could bubble under and come up because a lot of those films, like Shaun of the Dead and whatnot, kind of landed and then became cult classics over a period of time. And I get a vibe with this film, which is similar, because it is so enjoyable. I think there'll be a word-of-mouth cascade around, around this movie and more and more people watch it. And I think we'll really, really love it. Do you know what? I think you're absolutely right. But tell us about the story, Sean. It's set in Bristol, as you said. Um, it follows the story of Steve and Andrew, but mainly Steve, who are two lads uh, who grew up on a council estate. Their mum is played by the amazing Sally Phillips. Steve works in a butcher's in the day and catches fish uh, <laughs> illegally, <laughs> which, he sell, which he sells to save money. And he's saving up for a new motorbike, like a, like a trail bike, uh, a Honda uh, 125. And eventually he gets the money from doing these, these jobs that he does to buy it. And within 10 microseconds, the bike gets stolen. The story follows Steve and his brother, Andrew, who's out on probation, so he's trying to be good. How they try and basically unpick and find out who's stolen their bike. And it goes into the misty, dark underworld of the fences. Now, a fence is someone that buys and sells knockoff gear. And it's great. I don't want to give too much away because it's, it's quite a rich plot. But really, the story starts with Steve uh, and ends with Steve. Uh, and his really, his journey around not only this motorbike, but his relationship with his mum and his brother uh, yeah. and his mates, really. And when you think about it, you think about that plot, you think about the story, and it might not be that enticing, and you think, oh, it's about somebody who's looking for his stolen motorbike, but actually, it's more to do with the characters, because I think the character development in this film is really intriguing, and also, it's funny, because it's laugh-out-loud funny, you really feel like you're warming to these characters, because they have such quirks, each of them, they have, you know, some of them are more sensitive than others, some of them are downright kind of really slapstick and really over the top but not in a cringy way but in a in a really kind of heartfelt funny way but also yeah. i think it's based on will's father's background as well because will's father grew up in the you know in the late 70s early 80s in bristol on a council estate and i think it's kind of inspired by his story so i think that's quite nice as well the, the fact that it's more like a family story so it feels again quite heartfelt and it comes from the right place i think yeah and, and i think well what's important to call out here is there are dark moments in this film which i yeah. think is what anchors it to realism so it isn't some kind of saccharine story arc um, there are real moments of, of sadness and real moments of trauma in this movie, which is, which is, I think, acts, they're, they're anchors that kind of pull it, pull it back into where it is, which is a council estate in the 80s. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about what those, what those points are, but I think that's what rounds this out, because it could be, as they say, some kind of like quite, quite pastiche, saccharine, 80s kind of crime story, light crime story, which it's not, because you really get the connection between Sally Phillips, Sally Phillips and her husband, which is Steve and Andrew's father, the two boys in their relationship with their mother, the two boys in their relationship with each other, and then their friend groups. Um, and each one, I think, well, they've done a really good job of rounding, as you say, for rounding those characters out into people that are believable. Um, yeah. And so, a fab job. Jade Adams is in there as well. Love oh, Jade. yeah. Um, and she, she she's up. brilliant i mean the cast i think the cast are clearly having fun with this and i think that really shows and i think it's a great cast too i mean you've got david perkins eugene simon deshae gale um they're all excellent sally phillips is excellent although her role is quite small there's a really good scene where because she's Stephen and Andrew's mum, she walks in, she comes home and she walks into the living room. She's unaware that there are some guests there, shall we say. Um, <laughs> and these two thugs who are sat there, one of them is, is Paul Cooper, who was in the country with Daisy Mae Cooper. So I think, you know, the cast itself, that they're from a comedy background that interlinks. I think it's a comedy background that they all get and they've all been part of that background, I think, in some way. It's that kind of comedy... I think it's that kind of alternative comedy that has re been really successful. So I think 
I think you know, big tick for the cast. I think that I think the cast is terrific, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay, Jay plays a quite a fun character. A feisty mother in curlers. Very much so. So, and again, I'm not going to go too too much detail, but yeah, I think I think the casting is beautifully rounded out, and I and it feels like it's people from the southwest, people that have a love for that region that have kind of come back to do something. And I think that's really admirable and lovely, you know, because they can play it straight because that's where they're from. You know, it's like if yeah. it's like if you got invited back to your hometown to do something, or I got invited back to South Yorkshire, you can play it straight because really. That's what you've grown up with. It's kind. Yeah. You know how people interact. You know the language. So, I, and so, I think that also adds to this richness. You've not got people kind of, you know, mimicking a Bristolian accent. They are from that region. So, really, really great. And, and as I say, at the, at the top of the house, really enjoyed it. It was a film that I went into not knowing a great deal about, and so was had my film head on. But very quickly kind of fell in love with it and really enjoyed it, as did my husband. Yeah, I laughed that loud many times. It passed that, you know, a few laughs test, if you like, because you know, there are certain films where, you know, you kind of chuckle a couple of times, but this I thought was genuinely funny. And there's one scene where, I mean, I'm, I'm a vegan, so I don't, I don't find the whole butchers thing uh, amusing, <laughs> but obviously because that's what he was playing. He was playing somebody that worked in a butcher, you know, the main character, the protagonist. Um, worked in a butcher but there's a really funny scene where um, there's a little bit of violence not going to say too much about that but there is a fight you know an altercation and I think the reference was oh let's not butcher him and then he said we're not butchers and then he realised oh actually you are a butcher and I I lulled at that because I thought that was really funny because I think it's the kind of comedy that I think is really well timed too I think timing is you know so crucial to to this kind of comedy because like you say it's not just comedy there are some dark moments but I, I don't think it was jarring I think it it seemed to to settle quite well, I thought, the comedy and the drama. Yeah. And I think one thing to call out really is there is a period in the film where it starts to reference skinheads and, you know, the BMP and whatnot. But yeah. whilst it acknowledges that it doesn't double down on it, and I think that's part of this thing, this idea, because actually what it reflects really well is um, how multicultural and brilliant um, that part of the world is, rather than play into a trope, it kind of says, oh, no, no, but this is, you know, this is a, a, a more wider view of multicultural Bristol, um, which I thought was was kind of, again, I, that's why I think it rounded out nicely, because there's so many paths you could have gone down around 80s Britain that feel a bit overworked and overdone, even if it may be reality. I feel like it's been told in the story, and this film did it slightly different, which, again, I think was a surprise, because I was expecting probably the former, um, but it, it rounded out so lovely. As I say, I, I think as a package, it works really, really well from the casting, the script, um, the soundtrack. It sits so nice together. It's really been well considered, and, and that comes through in the end product. And obviously that's so important when you think about the soundtrack as well, because the soundtrack, there's a lot of scar tracks, two-tone, and like you said, that needs to be there, but it needs to be the right, kind of tracks to reflect that cultural mood as well should we mention the cinematography as well because adam pickford i think has done a really good job with this i mean it's very easy on the eye this film it's very bright even though there are moments where there is darkness i think it's it's a film that you really enjoy watching and it's really nice to look at i think it's quite crisp a lot of the cinematography as well and the editing seems really punchy i mean it rumbles along really nicely there are never any dull moments i was never bored watching this film yeah i agree I, I, look i don't know i don't know offhand the budget of this movie but it felt far slicker yeah uh, than some big budget things that i've seen yeah, you know, it so, doesn't look cheap, does it, at all? I'm guessing at, there was oh. a crowdfunding thing, because I, I said to my partner, Jer- Jeremy, I said, oh, wow, they're actually using these tracks, and they're the original tracks. They must have had a big budget. And also, when you look at the film, you do realise that it doesn't look cheap. So I'm, I I did notice there was a crowdfunding, uh, you know, in the credits at the end, they were referencing the people that helped them out, but there weren't that many people that helped them. No, so, no but that, and that's why I think it's hats off to the team, because... Yeah. They've created something that's got a level of polish. And you think about some of the things you see on streaming that has huge budgets and generally looks quite crap. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, I think the package is pretty is pretty swell um, across the board. So, and, and you're right to call out cinematography, cinematography film because it is um, top notch. Yeah. I really enjoyed this film. And like you said, I, I didn't really know much about it. Obviously, the director contacted us from one of the other reviews that we did. I think it was Inland. Do you remember we reviewed Inland? We weren't keen on that film, but obviously that was, I think that was based on a short, wasn't it? I felt like a short. Um, but yeah. I think that was the London Film Festival last year. But I'm really glad that Will got in touch with us because this is a really nice discovery. And yeah, I'm going to give it four stars because I thought it was it was really enjoyable. And I am giving it four stars. So well done, Will William. Yeah. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> exactly. And I'd really love more people to see this. So I hope that people watching will discover it. You know, I, I'm sure it's available on digital still. Um, but like I say, it had, a, it had a short cinema run. But hopefully, and you mentioned this earlier, that people will pick up on it and it will be a word of mouth thing and people will m maybe campaign to get it, you know, out for a cinema release again because it would be great to see it on the big screen. Well, I'm definitely going to be talking about it, and I'm thinking about all my pals from the Southwest, who I'm going to say, get your hands on a copy of this, or get, or, you know, try and watch it because I think they'll absolutely love it. Yeah. So it's called The Fence. Check it out. All the details down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Will, for getting in touch with us. And thanks, yeah, Will. We wish you all the best with the movie. Hopefully, it will start to rumble away again, and, and more people will discover it. But yeah, we we thought it was fantastic. So four stars from us, a boys on film. And don't forget to subscribe and check out the playlist on the screen now and we'll see you on the next one.